God bless you on this Wednesday, August the 2nd, 2023. Shout for joy to God, all the earth. Sing the glory of his name. Give him glorious praise. Make a joyful noise to the Lord, all the earth. Serve the Lord with gladness. Welcome to St. John African Methodist Episcopal Church in Cleveland, Ohio. I am Henry Curtis, pastor of St. John, and we are blessed once again to share in this time of prayer and meditation. I pray that you are safe and well wherever you are this day and that God's richest blessings will be upon you today. Let us begin our time with prayer. Our prayer today comes from the Book of Common Prayer. Let us pray. Let your continual mercy, O Lord, cleanse and defend your church. And because it cannot continue in safety without your help, protect and govern it always by your goodness. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Our scripture lesson today comes from Philemon chapter 1, verses 1 through 7. Hear now the word of the Lord. Paul, a prisoner for Christ Jesus, and Timothy, our brother, to Philemon, our beloved fellow worker, and Aphia, our sister, and Archippus, our fellow soldier, and the church in your house. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. I thank my God always when I remember you in my prayers because I hear of your love and of the faith which you have toward the Lord Jesus and all the saints. And I pray that the sharing of your faith may promote the knowledge of all good that is ours in Christ. For I have derived much joy and comfort from your love, my brother, because the hearts of the saints have been refreshed through you. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Our key verse today is Philemon 1 and 4. I thank my God always when I remember you in my prayers. Let us pray. Lord, speak to me that I may speak in living echoes of thy tongue. As thou hast sought, so let me seek thine erring children lost in love. Now may the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, my strength and my Redeemer. In Christ's holy name we pray. Amen. Today's text, taken from Philemon, is Paul's shortest New Testament letter. Scholars say that the letter to Philemon is comprised of only 335 Greek words. Though brief, Paul's letter to Philemon is deeply personal, and it demonstrates the apostle's abilities as an able counselor. It's important to understand that Paul wrote this letter to Philemon while he was in prison. His faith in Jesus Christ and the zeal with which he sought to spread the gospel landed him in jail. At a time in Paul's life, when he should have rightfully been concerned for himself, he writes a letter to Philemon, and he appeals to Philemon on behalf of Onesimus, a runaway slave. Philemon was Onesimus's master, and Paul used his relationship with Philemon and his authority as an apostle to broker peace between the two. It's important to understand the context of the times in which Paul wrote this letter. In Paul's time, about 35 to 40 percent of the population in the Greco-Roman world were slaves. Slaves were bought and they were sold at their master's will. Slaves were often mistreated, especially when they were old or sick. And once slaves were no longer useful, once they were no longer productive, they could be sent away from their master's house where they often died due to a lack of resources to care for themselves. So Paul's letter to Philemon takes an urgent tone because as Onesimus' master, Philemon had the legal right to kill him because he was a runaway slave. 
So for Paul, writing this letter was literally a matter of life or death for Onesimus. The apostle pivots, and he becomes a diplomat in this letter, as he appeals to Philemon on behalf of Onesimus. He says to his friend, I thank my God always when I remember you in my prayers. Because I hear of your love and of the faith with you have toward the Lord Jesus and all the saints. And I pray that the sharing of your faith may promote the knowledge of all the good that is ours in Christ. For I have derived much joy and comfort from your love, my brother, because the hearts of the saints have been refreshed through you. Philemon is believed to have been a leader in the Colossian church, and he was a wealthy man. As such, at some point in his life, he professed faith in Jesus Christ and presumably used his resources to help advance the church's work and mission. So Paul gets into Philemon's head and he aims for his heart in verse 4 when he says, I thank my God always when I remember you in my prayers. Though the issue that Paul addressed with Philemon was tense, it was concerning slavery, Paul addressed Philemon not as an adversary, but rather as a beloved fellow worker. The lesson, church, that we glean from this text today is when we see people as siblings, when we view them as our sisters and as our brothers, when we see them as part of our human family, it is easier for us to thank God for them and to remember them in our prayers, even when we do not agree. See, rare is the person who prays for people they do not like. Paul did not like the institution of slavery, and though the text does not say this, he probably did not like that Philemon was a slave master. But Paul appealed to him to the spirit of Christ that was in him and stated for the record that he prayed for Philemon. I have a question to, for you today, dear friends. For whom do you pray? It's important that as we mature in our Christian walk, that we have to grow in our spiritual lives to the point where we are praying for more people other than ourselves. You may say, well, Brother Pastor, Jesus prayed for himself. Yes, he prayed for himself. And after he prayed for himself, he also prayed for others. And when you pray for others, don't limit the others to simply close family and friends. The challenge for us today during this time of prayer and meditation as we examine this text from Paul to Philemon to be like Paul to pray for those who need your prayers and to help them make a decision that can positively affect other people's lives. See, Paul prayed for Philemon and he wrote to Philemon. And in so doing, he interceded on behalf of Onesimus, a slave. And he did this while he was in prison. The challenge for us today is to expand our prayers, to expand them to include people for whom we find it difficult to pray. Don't misunderstand anything that I've said to you today. Please go ahead and pray for yourself. Yes, please pray for your family. But after you've prayed for yourself, after you've prayed for your family, after you've prayed for your friends, I appeal to you to extend your prayers beyond the standard and the selfish. Don't just pray, God bless us for and no more. God bless all of us, those with whom I agree, those with whom I disagree. Lord, even be with those that I find it difficult to like because we are members of the human family. From a prison cell, Paul prayed. And he prayed not just for himself, not just for Timothy, 
but he prayed for Philemon, a slave master, and included in those prayers, I believe, that he prayed for Onesimus, a runaway slave. Let us today rejoice that we are here today because somebody prayed for us. They prayed for us unselfishly. They prayed for us even when we did not know they were praying for us. And they prayed for us maybe when we weren't even getting along. But we are here today because of the intercession of somebody who appealed to God on our behalf. As we mature and as we expand our prayer lives, may others outside of our core circle of family and friends and people we like, may others be blessed because of our prayers for them. The song was not yet written, but if it were, my Holy Ghost imagination tells me that perhaps the Apostle Paul would have ended his letter to Philemon with these words, I have a Savior. He's pleading in glory, a dear loving Savior, though earth friends be few, and now he is watching in tenderness over me. But oh, that my Savior were your Savior too. For you, I am praying. For you, I am praying. For you, I am praying. I'm praying for you. Thanks be to God. Amen. And speaking of prayer, please join me in praying the prayer that Jesus taught his disciples. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, now and forever. Amen. May the blessing of God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you now henceforth and forevermore. Amen. Please accept this invitation for you to join us in worship here at St. John African Methodist Episcopal Church, located at 2261 East 40th Street, Cleveland, Ohio, 44103, on Sunday morning at 10 o'clock. If you're unable to worship with us here in our sanctuary, we invite you to join us in our virtual service on Facebook Live at the 10 o'clock hour. If this video has been a blessing to you, please help the channel out by subscribing to it and clicking the thumbs up button and sharing the link with others so that they too will be blessed. Thank you so much for being with us today. Have a great rest of the day and a great rest of the week, and we look forward to seeing you soon. Until then, goodbye.